we talk about the best way to use hard money to buy a property, put maybe in the interim, a little bit of money out of pocket, but ultimately mm -hmm. what your goal is to not have hardly any money out of pocket, but still have the property cash flowing, right? Yeah. So, so that would be what a lot of people talk about being a burr. I'm here with Tyson. He's a college student in, at Arizona State University. He also does some fantastic videos for the Solaria um, organization. And so that's how I met Tyson. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit right now. He had some questions about hard money loans and how to use them as a first time investor. And just a quick note, Tyson, like you're, you're in an awesome spot to start investing because you're not relying on the real estate right now to you know, to make you money, right? Like you're going to mm -hmm. get an awesome job out of college. You're freelance, freelancing right now as, as a, you know, a, a tech guy and an audio video specialist and, and stuff like that. So, so you're in a good spot. You, you don't have to be a full-time real estate to cut the cord of a W2 to be a successful real estate investor. In fact, I, I think those people that have a solid W2 job, you and I have talked about this, right? Like you're going to have a better chance to maybe get a quicker start in real estate because you're going to have that W2 income that will allow you to qualify for longer term loans quicker, but mm. you clearly need to bridge that gap in the meantime. So anyway, yeah. um, I want to, I just want to kind of answer your questions and, you know, at some point they may be applicable to other people that may or may not watch this down the road. So fire away with some of your basic questions and we'll just kind of go down the path. And then um, I probably got 25 minutes tops just so you know, since we're starting a little late. Absolutely. But hey, Matt, thank you so much for, for taking this call with me, man. I really do appreciate that. I appreciate your time. Um, <laughs> it's, it's such an opportunity. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, like you said, I, I am, you know, I know about real estate. I, I, I don't have any properties just yet. So um, I am looking to take my first steps getting in, get, you know, getting my first rental property. I want to go the multifamily route. Okay. My first, okay. my first kind of, I guess, question that, or direction I want to take this is like, I've got some money saved up about 10 grand. Um, okay. I was thinking about using, you know, an FHA loan, but some of the properties that I want to look at, cause I'm out here in this more expensive market, you know, I can't really uh, find a, a fourplex or a triplex, you know, for, you know, around that price range. So it's like, what are kind of like my options, I guess, towards like using is, is it viable to use hard money to get the property first and then to try and refinance out? Like what's a good, like, like angle of attack, I suppose, for someone in, in my position. Yeah, no. So let's break that down a little bit. Cause there's a couple of different parts that are going to come into play. One is your cash out of pocket, you know, the availability of money to mm -hmm. use either today or down the road. Then there's also the actual value of the property today or what it could be later. Right. So those are going to come into play when we talk about the best way to use hard money to buy a property, put maybe in the interim, a little bit of money out of pocket, but ultimately mm -hmm. what your goal is to not have hardly any money out of pocket, but still have the property cash flowing. Right. Yeah. So, so that would be what a lot of people talk about being a burr. You're going to buy it. You're going to rehab it. You're going to re-rent it. You're going to mm -hmm. refinance it. And the key at that point is to hopefully be as most money out of pocket as possible, or at least amount out of pocket as possible with at least a break even or cash flowing property. So yes. it is harder to do in markets where the prices are higher. For example, it is hard to do in Salt Lake right now to do a true burr where you get all of your money out. Mm -hmm. um, it might be hard to do in Arizona right now. Um, so then you're weighing two things that you just said, like I got 10 grand FHA. So that's a great spot. So you could put 10 grand down on an FHA loan, but then what you're looking for is a property that's already in pretty darn good shape, mm -hmm. right? So that you don't have to spend dollars after for rehab, unless those dollars are coming from the cash flow, right? And, and, yeah. and, and, or find one that's severely discounted because of the condition, leverage hard money to create that value so that when you refinance it, you're still less than 10 grand out of pocket, okay? Does, does that make sense? And we'll maybe go through an example here, but I think you probably maybe need to look in an area that isn't as hot right now, that still has the ability to cash flow and, and to push your, your appreciation through value add, 
or you're just going to need to find a really, really undervalued property in your current market. So it, it's going to be possible, but to try and not get into something with less than 10 grand is going to be a little bit challenging. So to yeah. back up though, is there any part of the burr that maybe doesn't make sense? Then we'll try and walk through an example. Um, so you're talking about, you know, for instance, me putting down 10 grand, right? That, that's my initial out of pocket. Then I go through, and, and this is on the FHA loan is what yeah, you're saying. So FHA, especially if you own or occupy, like let's say you found a duplex or a fourplex, right? And, and you mm -hmm. want to own or occupy it. FHA has a program that would allow you to put, it's either three or three and a half percent down. So mm -hmm. if you take that 10,000 bucks, that would allow you to get into a property at the most at $285,000. Mm -hmm. Take 285 times three and a half percent, that's 10,000 bucks. That gets you into it with only $10,000 down. Now you still have closing costs and stuff like that, but usually you could negotiate that with the seller and have them pay those or increase the price to pay your closing costs. So if you're talking about getting, this will be a good example to do. Let, let's, let's use an example of a $285,000 fourplex, which by the way, probably doesn't exist in Arizona and it doesn't exist in Utah. Um, Side note, I have found a couple of them out here like that, but they're, they're cash only offers. And the work yeah. doesn't scare me because I'm handy, right? I can do all that work, right? but it's just, I <laughs> wasn't in the position to pull that trigger, you know? <laughs> okay. Well, but let's, let's look at that example. So let's say yeah, you have yeah. 285,000. Yeah. If you want to try, but if you want to try and get into that with no money out of pocket or $10,000 out of pocket, mm -hmm. you know, just and it, it, do your, get your, I, I have a whiteboard here. I should have a screen on it, but I have a whiteboard here that I'm whitening on. So do your down payment requirement is going to be three and a half percent. So do three and a half percent of 285. That should be 10,000 yeah. bucks. That's the case. $10,000 gets you into that property, but you can't buy anything above and beyond $285,000. Right. Unless you can find a loan program where it's a hundred percent financing for an investment property. There may be something like that out there, but it's probably not out there. Now, let's say you could burr it. And let's say that same 285, and let's just assume for this example's sake that 285 is the, is the ARV, right? That is the rehab after value, value, right? That's the after repair value. So the way to burr it, the way to burr it with hard money, and this may take a quick second to back into, but you would really probably need to get this property for, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up my calculator. Mm -hmm that I use, I shared this, um, I shared this with you. Um, so you didn't look at it yet, but as I play with it here, um, it'll make more sense to you when you then play with it. So I'm gonna share my screen. This is my Burr calculator and, and you're gonna get a copy of this or you have a copy of it. And anyone out there listening, if you want a copy of it, let me know. But man, this can get really complicated, but it might help you think through how hard money works when you burr it. So let, let's go off of, we're gonna have to back into this, but Tyson, you'll, th this will make sense for you once I okay. go through it, especially yeah. when you think through it on the front end of how we just talked about how $10,000 gets you into it if it's already at, you know, the rehab value. But we're going to back into it and say, at some point in time, this is going to be worth 285. It's definitely not worth 285 right now. We're going to say maybe this needs like 25,000 in repair. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to change these numbers a little bit till we get it to an optimal point. Um, um, and actually, I think I have a cheat sheet where it already shows that. Yeah, it does. Awesome. And I'll walk you through how how I, how I did this. So on this, th this is a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. What, what would you say that 285, maybe fourplex would be renting for, for each side? Yeah. Uh, probably around 1100, like nine each, to 1100. Each unit. Yeah. Yeah. For, if we're talking to like a two bed, if it's a two bedroom unit, then that's easy. 11, maybe 12. Um, uh, if it's a one bedroom unit. For the sake of these numbers, I think that would probably put the value of that thing way, way higher, but maybe not. It, Man, there's so much here to talk about for another day, but you know, yeah. the cap rate you know, is going to affect the value. So let's assume yes. 
rents out here are expensive. Are but the, they? Yeah, the listing prices on houses aren't like they are in Salt Lake. The rents are still expensive. No, no, that's good. Maybe I need to start looking more in Arizona. Um, <laughs> and let's say this $25,000 remodel is not a very big remodel. So let's say you're spending six months and your cost of money on a hard money loan, and I'll break this down for you. I charge two points and 12%. When okay. you annualize that, that's like a 14% right and so this is a strict interest calculation of of um of so we'll, we'll annualize that at 14 percent because two and 12 is is 14 percent annually and so this calculation is just showing that on um on how many months uh so i did six months here so for six months your cost of money is fourteen thousand dollars and let's okay. just let's just pause really quick to figure that out longhand and my other calculator will show up better you know if i'm two points and 12 percent, if you're borrowing a hundred thousand dollars you are uh, each point is a percent so you'd be two thousand dollars right okay and then 12 percent is the annual divide that by 365 that gives you a per day and then however many days is is uh so it's 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 just prorated on however many days you use it just like, it's just a simple interest calculation. Okay. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm following. Okay, cool. So this is a good way to do it. This is a good example to show you how you get no money, no money out of pocket. So let me just play with this for a minute to see um, if I've set this up. This is a very well put together calculator, by the way, too. Well, it is, and it will make a ton more sense. Um, um, it'll make a ton more sense when I walk through it with you here in a little bit more detail. I just kind of have to back into this. If I, if I would have thought of a real example before. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand. I understand. Okay. This is good. This is the scenario. Let's say, let's say the final value is 285. Okay. And, you know, th there's different types of financing on the back end that you're going to get. The advantage to doing an FHA up front is that you'd only put $10,000 down, but you mm -hmm. would have to own or occupy it. Yeah. Otherwise, all investment property loans typically are a 25% down payment. Okay. So then you would need obviously a lot more money down to satisfy 25% versus three and a half percent. But is there a way to do it where you would still end up getting an investment loan with 25% down payment or equity requirement and still only be into the property $10,000? Okay, this is how you would do it. And I've done this numerous times with different numbers, but the same thing. Okay. So I have this set up and, and this is set up um, to be really accurate now. So let's assume that you're gonna hold the money again for six months. This is your bridge money with your hard money lending, right? And it's a 14% annual rate, which again is two and 12, only for the interest being charged and on the time you have it out. And that's how we got six months, $12,390 is two points plus six months worth of interest at 12%, okay? Two and 12. You following? Okay. So let's assume that we could buy this for 177,000. Let's assume that the repairs are $25,000. You're going to have your cost of money. So the total cash that you need to buy this, rehab it, and to do your purchase financing or hard money is $214,390. Now, what are we trying to do here, though? We're just trying to bridge the gap to create that higher value so that we can get, then get a new appraisal and get a new loan based off of the new appraised amount, which we are thinking is gonna be 285 versus our purchase price of 177, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's where our mind is. With a burr, we're thinking ahead, what's it gonna be worth? What's it gonna to take to get there? Then what are the strings attached with that long-term loan? Typically those are gonna be a 25% equity and, and then they'll give you a 30 year fixed rate you know, and amortize. So that's what we're going for. So you'll see in the other video that I've done, I, I kind of explained this maybe a little bit more methodically 
but, but I'll go through it right now as well. So think about this as far as how much cash is going to be left in the deal. How much cash is going to be left in the deal? And you're actually going to get, be able to get 25% down payment. So if we get an appraisal, let's just, again, think through this. You've bought this now for 177. You've put 25,000 into it. You're going to end up holding it for six months. And now you have a property that's worth 285. The bank comes out and says, Tyson, it's worth 285. Our loan program says we'll loan 75% of that 225. Bam, we're giving you a loan for 213,750. Okay. Now to get that loan, it's going to cost you three additional percent in loan fees for the new loan. So we got to account for those. That's going to be $6,413. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yeah. So now how much cash are you leaving in the deal? This is where it's magic. This is where you really could get into this property for only $7,000. And if you follow my sales, your new loan amount is 214,390, which again, is 75% of your newly created value of 285, right? Mm -hmm. You also have refinance costs for your new 30 year loan of 6,413. You do the math there, that means you're leaving in $7,053 on this deal. But you borrowed at some point, the purchase price, the repair money, your interest carrying costs. So that's a whole other discussion about how to temporarily borrow that extra money mm -hmm. so that you can bridge this, right? But at the end of the day, you are only leaving in $7,053. That's the magic of doing a burr. Now, then what we gotta do is we gotta come down here and make sure it cash flows. So that's why I was wondering like, let's just, let's just assume that we kind of know what the rents are for the building and let's just even say it's a modest in this case $700 rent you got four units that is $2800 a month 33,600 a year let's take a 30% expense ratio that means you have cash left over before you have to pay the mortgage of $23,520 right yeah so then we come back up here to your cash flow right now interest rates on a 30 year fixed or probably about 3.9 for an investment property. If I take my new loan amount of 213,750, my monthly payment on a yearly basis, my annual cost of debt is $12,098. If my property after it's repaired and fixed up with four tenants in there paying $700 a month after expenses, I'm getting $23,520 a year minus my debt. This is my cash flow left over at the end of year one, $11,421.71. Okay. So this is obviously a hypothetical. What I would want you to do now is go out and find some fourplexes and kind of analyze them in a few different ways. And, and, while we wrap up the call, I'll kind of maybe give you some tips on, on what key factors you're going to look at to then plug into a calculator like this to see if you can burr it. Because if that all goes to plan, not only did you only put out a pocket up front, $7,000, but at the end of year one, you'll have basically paid yourself back and you're already an input return going forward because you have an extra $4,000 there each year. Yeah. Does that make what? sense? Yeah, that's, that's insane. <laughs> so, so then there's different metrics down here that you can kind of evaluate what your cap rate is, what your cash on cash return is. My guess is this deal probably does not exist anywhere because these numbers are really, really good the way we did it. But, but it does go to show the, the method and the logic behind, um, you know, a rental. Let me give you one quickly that's maybe a little bit more of a realistic example. Mm hmm I just bought a sixplex, okay? And my purchase price was 928. I am thinking it is going to be a 1.35 appraised value. I am gonna to need to put 
about 120,000 in repair. I am benefiting a little bit because I don't have quite as high of cost of money, but I still have a cost of money. Mm-hmm. I will probably be able to get an 80% loan to value. My interest rate will probably be closer to four. Okay. So how this one looks for me, and I'm going to do a 30 year fixed instead of a 15 year. I also have a 15 year, just to kind of show you, you know, like that one you have, if rents were higher, you did a 15 year, you'd probably be able to cash flow it and pay it off in 15 years, you know? So, that's so that's a way to look at it. But so in this case, I'm going to be able to burr this. I bought it with private money. I'm going to sink 120 grand into it. I'm going to bump rents up after my value add. I'm putting about $20,000 per unit into it. It'll appraise for 1.35. I will end up leaving in about $62,000, which is not terrible, right? Like if I leave 62 grand in, that's not the end of the day for me because that's still a 9.9% cash on cash return. Um, my ARV cap rate is going to be a little over five, which I think is market rate for this. My purchase price cap rate, 7.33. But the point here is I'll be able to get into after, you know, maybe eight months, because this one might take a little bit longer. I'll be able to get into a $1.35 million building because I did create that legit value to 1.3 for only $62,000. If I were to go out and try to buy this building from myself after I've rehabbed it at market value, I would end up needing to put in 25% down payment, which would be, whoops. I don't know why it doesn't want to let me do a two, five there. (laughs) Okay which would be $337,000. But by engineering it this way, by doing a burr, I end up with the same debt that I would have ended up if I just bought this at full market value, but I'm really only $62,000 out of pocket. I still cash flow, not a lot, but I cash flow quite a bit compared to what my cash out of pocket is. Mm -hmm. And if I were to just go buy this, you know, off the shelf, so to speak, I'd have to put $337,000 down. So that is, so, so there's more to your question in terms of how hard money works. This is kind of a, a backend way of showing you the advantages of using hard money, but it only works when you couple it with finding a discounted property, preferably off market, where you can create way more value than what it is today, right. use the hard money, and then get in and out of it on a long-term loan. And that's why I said you have an advantage of being a W-2 guy because you'll have really good, um, because you'll have good income, you'll be able to qualify for those loans. Mm-hmm. And then you just got to get good at doing the burr. So I, that was really kind of a fire hose. It was maybe a little bit more than I was planning on going over, but I, I hope it, so after you watch my two videos, all of this will make a lot more sense. I was following along with that, you know, I, I, I helped put Dakota the education course together. So I have, I have a decent understanding. And this yeah. it, this brought in that hard money aspect. So, like, yeah. it, so it that's where that piece is. And obviously the, the quick part that you'll understand quickly is in general, my terms are, are two points, 12% on a six month note. I'll let interest accrue and the points be rolled into the loan so that there's just a balloon payment at the end. So you're not making monthly payments.